News dropped recently that uh, the New York Jets fired their head coach, Robert Sala. That's unfortunate. Man, I saw that. I saw that that headline, and I was just like, "Yo, I feel like Salah's a solid coach, man. Like, you know, he had a lot of success um, with the Niners, right? When he then he came over to the Jets, and he's defensive minded head coach. Feel like he got, he's got a good energy with the guys. Um, so it's, it, it surprised me, man. And and and. He's fired now with the Jets sitting at, at two and three. Uh, obviously, you know, this is uh, Aaron Rodgers' second season. There's, there's big expectations for Aaron um, and, and the Jets organization, and, and two and three isn't cutting it. But it is early, man. We're, we're talking, you know, it's week, week five. There's, there's a lot of football to go. And so to, to see a, a firing this early, makes me think that maybe it's it's there's some things outside of the performance of the team that this decision was being based off of that was potentially some you know some political pieces some uh some conflicts going on within the front office uh within the building that maybe we're not we're not privy to um because it's not like they haven't won a game you know if they were 0 and 5 like, okay yeah you got to get out there but they're two and three, yeah. Yeah. That's early. And um also he's isn't he the defensive coach? Like a defensive minded guy. He is defensive minded, but the his the interim head coach actually is the defensive coordinator. So they they took this guy up. Uh exactly. So it's, I'm confused as to what they felt. You know, I, I I'm a I'm one of those guys who believes, like, obviously, like, you know, the head coach has to coach the whole team. But when you ask for either a defensive-minded coach or offensive-minded coach, that coach is usually going to spend more time with that side of the ball. Though he's the head coach, it's what he's going to watch, what he prefers, is what he's growing, what his background is. Um, the defense, if I'm not mistaken, last year was top five. Uh, good defense this year. Yeah. Really good defense. I don't I don't see it how it comes down to that guy is what I'm saying. And like you said, they're two and three. That's that's what I'm not getting. Um, I don't know what it is, but that that's what kind of puzzles me on that whole situation is you know, it, you're two and three. He's a defensive minded guy, and your defense, you know, statistically over the last what two since he's been there has been good. Yeah, I mean, you got to think about, like, you know, what is uh, Aaron Rodgers' in- involvement uh, in Salah's dismissal? You know, is is this, you know, him him being you know, not fully satisfied with with the situation, you know, and, and you know, saying that, hey, if, if I'm going to be here for and, and have a chance to win over the next, you know, couple of seasons or however long he has left on his, his contract, then – you know, this guy, you you got to get somebody else in there. That's what I feel like for me, that's like, I think about why this move potentially happens. It boils down to that because like your franchise quarterback, who's he's 41 years old, he's been in the league longer than a lot of his coaching staff. You know what I mean? It's like what, what he says is going in that building. So, and, and if Aaron wanted solid to stay, I imagine that he would, Stand on the table and be like, nah, it's early on in the season. Let's keep our guy, keep this guy here so we can have a chance to to go and win. I mean, I don't know. I think it's interesting because some, some teams, when you see a midseason firing of the head coach, sometimes that sparks, uh, you know, like a re-engagement of the team. The team kind of starts to get some energy. Uh, I feel like that happens every time where, like, the new interim guy can just kind of be more free and have more fun and practice. And then the team maybe is playing with more energy, but it also goes the other way because positive, positive energy don't always uh, equal wins. It does not. And that's the thing for me. It's like, like you said, I guess he would stand up on the table for him, but like, he's going to let that man just go at two and three. 
You got a chance. And he's still not – I don't know. I, he, he doesn't call the offensive plays. Yeah. He's all on offense. And, you know, it is what it is. But, like, it can be fixed. They got good players, so it can be – obviously can be fixed. But, like, what does he have to do with that at all? Like, that's the thing. That, that has nothing to do with him. So, it's like it, – it's not a full team thing. They don't look awful as a full team. You look bad on one specific area of the ball, and you have for a long time. Deej, did you uh, have you ever been on a team <clears throat> uh, that had a mid uh, a head coach firing mid season? Nah, man, I'm not a, I have to keep all my coaches fortunate. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting, man. We uh, so the first year that. You were out of Houston in 2020. Uh, you were in Cincinnati. I was still, I was still in Houston at that time. Um, we started 0 and 4, and uh, Bill O'Brien got got fired. He got canned after we start started 0 and 4. And bro, it was so it was such a, a crazy time in Houston because. You talk about politics and just a lot of things going on in the front office. There were a lot of politics. Um, there was this long Sports Illustrated article about Jack Easterby who came over as like from a, being a chaplain at, with the Patriots and he came over with the Texans and he somehow was like essentially like the assistant GM uh, and was basically second in charge to Coach O'Brien who at that time he was operating as head coach and as general manager. And, you know, Jack Easterby was close to Coach O'Brien, but he was also also seemingly close with ownership. And so when we ended up starting 0-4, uh, there was a lot of things that went on, it seems, that outside of just the performance of the team that led to Coach O'Brien's demise and, and getting fired. And... I remember like the first practice or the first week of practice after Coach OB left and it was so loose out in practice. Like it was super loose because Rack had taken over, right? Romeo Cornell was the head guy, you know, love Rack, legend. And he was a little on the reins. You know, Coach OB would keep things tight. And so it was, it was cool, but I think we maybe won that upcoming game with the Jack with the, against the Jaguars. So we were one and four, and it was like, oh yeah, this positive energy leading the wins. And after that, it was it was kind of more the, the same how it began. You know, it was shitty. And I just remember the thought of like, man, I miss Coach O'Brien's like uh, pushing us to go win. Like that dude wanted to win. You know what I mean? So, like, the, the loose and positive energy, all that was cool. But it was like, man, at the end of the day, I don't know if this is the best decision for our team. Because us starting 0-4 isn't all about Coach OB. This is, you know, we it was 2020, so we were all virtual meetings. You know, it's COVID time. Dudes were, you know, falling asleep on during meetings. You know, they're chilling on the couch when we're on our iPads. We're not in the meeting room. Like, there were so many things that contributed to us starting 0-4 outside of, you know, say outside of Coach O'Brien and, and what he was bringing to the table. So, bro, I just think there's so much, there's so much political shit that goes behind these coaching decisions. And, uh, man, I hope uh, Sala lands on his feet because it, it seems like he's a good dude. Yeah, man. I mean, this you talking about Coach O'Brien who just went to the playoffs the year before. Like Coach O'Brien who went one division, what? Three out of the five bro, years he was Bro, dominating the AFC South. Dominate. Like, you know what I'm saying? I think did a great job. So I mean it happened. I don't I don't know how it happens or why it happens, bro, but it happens and it's it's unfortunate. And like you said, there were a lot of political things. I mean, shoot, I, I remember there being a lot of political things when I was on my way out of there. It's just it led to me not re signing and so it was just interesting, man, to kind of watch that whole thing happen. It was, I always describe to people how that one was kind of like, for me, especially like going to a new team and then being, having a different perspective. Like I was like, you know, when you're inside the house, you don't know the house is on fire. And then you get outside and you're like, damn, I could have burned mm -hmm. up in there. 
Mm. <laughs> like, yeah. He like, <laughs> like, like, yo, it really was on fire. So it was just kind of crazy. Um, but, they got toasty you know, in I, there. He got toasty. Hopefully, the Jets. <laughs> you know what? I don't. I don't wish anything good for the Jets. Don't wish anything bad. I got nothing really to say. Uh, I hear you, brother. I hear figure. you. It's, it's just it's unfortunate. Like you said, he seems like a good. That's unfortunate. Is there? 